Welcome to The Natural View. I'm Maggie Jacqua. I'm the content director of Whole Foods Magazine, and I'm here with my co-host, Todd Pallet of 24 Stories Marketing. Hi, Todd. Hi, Maggie. Excited for this one. We have Diana Morgan. Um, Diana wears so many hats in the natural products industry, um, from serious business to like serious parties. So she's the head of scientific and regulatory affair affairs at Cara. She is on the board of director of the Council for Responsible Nutrition, and she's the founder of What's Up with Subs. So I think you're like the queen of like party with purpose, right? <laughs> like have fun, but there's uh, a goal for bettering us as professionals and, you know, community in the industry. So talk to us about What's Up with Subs. I got to attend one and I had so much fun. It was a great event. Oh, awesome. Well, first, hi, everyone. Uh, let me just say thank you both both of you guys for having me on the podcast. Um, you know, I um huge, huge fan of Whole Foods Magazine and 24 oh, Store Marketing. Um, and just, you know, a, a really quick plug as I talk about uh, what's up with SUPS, I do want to shout out this awesome logo that Todd had did. Um, uh. <laughs> series marketing um oh thanks oh Tom, i didn't know you did that i love that oh thanks yeah well and the story of that's so cool just because you know we were connected by a mutual friend in the industry you are just like hey i've got this idea about this i mean it was so organic and natural and what i love about it is fast forward you know i don't know a year year and a half and i was at your chicago event and we're talking and you still just kind of said I just made, I just did this organization for fun to connect people like, no. And I just love the, the purity of that. And I think that's a big part of its, of its success. Yeah. You know, you hit the nail right on the head and that's, you know, when I go back to March of last year, when Expo West was canceled, it really just, um, I'm sure if, a lot of people felt it, but I was just really heartbroken because I did want to see a lot of the people that I, I normally get to see at Expo West. I wasn't going to get to see. And, you know, I feel like in our industry, it's a big industry in terms of revenue, but it's a small industry in terms of, um, you know, the people, like everybody knows each other, you know, the people that have been in the industry for a while, the lifers, um, you know, really have those connections. We have our industry family and industry friends and really needed an outlet to make sure we keep those connections strong. I mean, especially yeah. during a pandemic when, you know, everybody, first of all, was was getting sick of doing things virtually, but also we needed that, um, that human connection. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to just get everyone together, um, no agenda, just really hang out with your industry connections, but then also making new connections and utilizing utilizing it also as a form of bringing those into the industry that you know might be up and comers young into the industry or even those that might want to get into the industry and just really having having that community where you could take people under your wing and just you know develop the new talent yeah that's that's really cool and i think it's while it evolved during the the pandemic and there was a lot of on the you know the one I went to and I imagine some of your other events there was a lot of uh people discussing like oh my gosh I can't believe we're we're together again and that was the novelty of it in some ways I can't wait to fast forward as we get back to normal and see events like just evolve and and grow from there because there's just so much possibility there so it's exciting yeah yeah so you know I think that the sky is the limit and I, I you know, I just want to make everyone better than the next. And, you know, if anyone wants to get involved, um, you know, help, help with the events or, you know, anything, you know, interested in sponsoring in any of the events, um, you know, feel free to contact me directly or, you know, message me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Um, you know, be happy to, to chat about that. Yeah, really cool. We're excited to see what, what's to come. We want to talk a little bit about fitness, right? Because, so we started this little, Maggie and I started this little fitness club for the industry called Fit for Natural. And you were one of the first people we thought of in terms of talking to, because we know you have some pretty big fitness goals and it's a part of your life. And so we want to talk a little bit about that. We're, we're sort of endurance running centric, Maggie and I, and some of the other folks in the group. Um, but then there are so many sports represented and you kind of bring in a different angle to that. So, you know, in the spirit of Fit for Natural, let's just hear a little bit about what you're up to in terms of keeping fit and what are some of those goals? Yeah, so I have, um, you know, so many goals that I want to accomplish. Um, so right now, so, you know, I, I do train every day. 
And uh, I'm more in like the, um, the lifting space, bodybuilding space, uh, attempting right now uh, towards the end of the year. We'll see if I, I make it. I'm, I'm working with a trainer right now, but I'd like to compete in um, bikini competition for female bodybuilding. So, you know, really just want to, to um, promote strong over skinny and, you know, that women can, um, you know, do deadlifts, um, do squats, like pick up barbells. And, you know, I, I just want to really see how far I could push myself. Um, you know, also by the end of summer, I, I, you know, I, I put this in when I was signing up for Fit for Natural as some of my goals. So right now I'm benching 30, I'm benching 75, but I'd like to end up benching like at least 100, 105. Uh, and, you know, that's, and, you know, and I'm, I'm small, like I'm five foot, like a hundred pounds. So, you know, I'm really trying to like build that mass and get that extra strength. But, you know, bench press has always been something that I was always shied away from because it was really intimidating. And, you know, you see like the big bodybuilders doing it. And then I just decided, you know, I'm just going to get under the bench. I started with just the bar, which is 45 pounds. And then, you know, gradually adding like fives to each side, then, you know, adding a two and a half and then like three fives. And, you know, eventually I'd get, I want to get to two twenty fives, um, and then, you know, just take it from there. Yeah. I love that. It's so inspiring. And I love, you know, seeing, women like go and do things just a total quick aside but my mother in like 1984 she was in to weightlifting and it was when the gyms were just racquetball clubs and then had little tiny rooms of like a few weights and she would do competitions and there would be like maybe two maybe three women in the competitions and they would get men's trophies because there were oh, wow. no women's trophies for this so i love it that it's growing and it's inspiring to see. So I, I really look forward to hearing about the competition more as you're on your journey. And also like we're endurance runners, but weightlifting is so important and I have to force myself, even though I know I need to do it. So I love, you know, that you'll share your story and it'll inspire me to like pick up those weights and do a better job of cross training. So thank you for that. Oh uh, yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing, you know, I realized, um, you know, before I really started working with a trainer, um, you know, I have a degree in nutrition, and everything, and I, I know SUPS really well, but I feel like, um, you know, I was, I was overtraining. And so I was getting down to, a, you know, a really unhealthy weight because I was doing, you know, a lot of the hit. And I think, um, you know, this, this may be the a misconception, but I feel like a lot of women have the, the fear of gaining weight too. You know, I had it, you know, when I, when he told me I started need to starting really eating a lot more, you know, the weight isn't, in fat, it's muscle because muscle weighs more than fat. So, you know, really the same shape um, could look different at hundred pounds, 110 pounds and 120 pounds based off of your fat or muscle. And I think that's, that's going to be something really important for a lot of, um, you know, people in general, but I think more so with women is like the fear that it's, it's okay to gain weight when you start lifting weights. Yeah, absolutely. Do not look at that scale and be a slave to that because that's just crap. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's like, how, it's like how your clothes fit. Right. So I, you know, while I do my check-ins, it's, it's more so like, um, you know, measurements and, and just the, the look of the clothes. Mm -hmm. I just love the phrase, you know, skinny or strong over skinny. Uh, that's mm -hmm. just, that's huge. Um, and you, I don't know, personally, if I lift regularly and run, I feel so much better and so much more energetic than just running or doing cardio all the time. Yeah. And also for women and Todd and I actually just did a, a podcast about healthy aging and especially looking at women and active lifestyles and the importance of, of exercise. And it is so important to add some of that muscle building to, you know, support you into a longer life of being vibrant and not, you know, feeling too run down and having your body breaking down. So yes, we need the women to embrace this. I need to embrace it. What would your advice be to get started on a routine? Um, so I would say definitely consistency. You, you know, you don't have to go hard, super hard every day, but it, it is really important to have that consistency. And one of the best things that, you know, I've done is really just, um, first of all, getting a trainer, because there's a lot of times where you're doing, you're doing the motions, but unless you're really an expert and, 
and have that extra set of eyes, you may be doing the motions incorrectly. So really getting right form is tremendous for, for building muscle. But then, um, you know, with consistency, there's been so many times, you know, like I go to the gym in the morning because that's, you know, the only time I have available. But there's been so many times like waking up at 530, especially when it's dark out in the winter. I'm like, I don't want to get to the gym. Just getting my gym clothes on. And I just tell myself, just get your gym clothes on, get there, even just start walking on the treadmill for 10 minutes. And then instantly, like when the 10 minutes is done, you know, the endorphins are up, my heart rate is up and I'm ready to go. And a lot of people, you know, just need to take that leap. And, and that's what I say, just don't even worry about going hard, just get there. Um, so that would, that would be the very first, first thing I would say. And, you know, I think the other piece is accountability, which is why I'm so happy um, that you created the Fit for Natural group because being accountable to other people is your support system. It's really hard to do it by yourself if you don't have a support system or if you have people in your life that um, might be downbeat downers or, or almost want to see you fail. You need that support system and those people that are pushing you. And, you know, having uh, a gym buddy also helps. So any anyone, and even if it's, if it's virtual, you know, like what a lot of people are doing with the Peloton, um, just having that community and, you know, like pu pushing each other. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things I, I do love about Fit for Natural is people are posting and they're posting their achievements, big and small, and it's just so inspiring and it makes you want to go out there and, and share in that. And I also love the sharing of advice and wisdom. Like I have some questions I know I'm going to be asking about hydration. This is a good question for you, Diana. Like we don't have to talk brands, but what, you know, supplements are in your must have to help you stay powered up and strong and energized. Um, so I'm very curious about that. This is yeah. a great question. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I do take a lot of subs and, um, one of the things I love for hydration, but also, um, you know, just for, for building muscle on top of protein powder, you know, I, you know, I take my, my protein shake every day after I do my training session, but during the day, I'll just sip on, um, essential amino acids and, you know, I have my, um, my huge water cup right here. So I'll just fill this up and, and I'll put in uh, essential amino acids. And on top of that, it's, you know, there's ingredients there that will hydrate like sodium, potassium on top of the essential amino acids, which will really support the muscle recovery and growth. Um, you know, because amino acids are the basically building blocks of a protein. So, um, you know, that also helps me get my water intake on top of, you know, just good for flavoring the water. A lot of people I know hate just drinking water plain. And, you know, some people will use Mio or, or other things like that to kind of flavor the water. But I, you, you know, I try to get the most bang for my buck. And that's kind of where I'll put the EAAs in there to kind of flavor the water and do like double duty. Um, so on top, so, and so that's what I'll do during the day. Um, I always take a pre-workout before um, I lift and that's usually about 20 minutes before, before I train. I, I'm kind of sensitive to caffeine. So I'll take anywhere between like uh, 150 to 250 milligrams of caffeine in my pre-workout and, you know, some other ingredients for pump, um, so, uh, so I'll usually do a pre-workout and then, um, on top of that, I take, um, digestive enzymes and probiotics with, um, my protein powder because it really helps to break down protein. Um, and then on top of that, I, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit sensitive, uh, to dairy. So it just helps my, my digestive tract. Mm -hmm. so, um, so those are just some of the products that I take for, for lifting and sports nutrition. Um, and then, you know, I, I also take some supplements for joint health to really support my joints since I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot of activity. Um, but then, you know, I do take a whole host of other supplements for other things like, you know, skin and hair, you know, obviously I take a daily multivitamin and then I take, uh, vitamin D. I take, um, American ginseng for focus. You know, I usually take that in the afternoon to kind of help me focus through the rest of the day. And then I take, um, vegetarian omega, um, you know, make sure I have my, EA, um, essential, um, fatty acids. I take, um, astaxanthin, which also helps, um, with, um, you know, skin and just antioxidant property. So, you know, I take a, a lot of ingredients, but, you know, all very thoughtful and very purposeful. Let's talk a little bit about uh, 
you know, music and, and how that might fuel your workouts. So do you always listen to music when you, you know, do you always have a playlist going? Or oh, how yeah. does that work? All the time, all yeah. the time. And I have two pairs of headphones with me at all times in case I ever forget my headphones at home. So <laughs> That's serious. Yeah. I, That's yeah, a good idea. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, I think there was some statistic, I don't know if it's, if it's um, at that accurate, but it said, you know, the right music will make you go 30% harder and, you know, w- without a doubt. Um, yeah. So I have this really long Spotify playlist that I'll just keep adding to and adding to. Um, it's actually called, um, believe it or not, it's called Labor Day, my, my playlist. And I originally made it for when I was going into labor, when I was pregnant. And oh. I just, you know, there's, I feel like there's a lot of similarities between that and working out. So it just kept extending. And now my playlist is about seven hours long. Oh, wow. And, That's cool. And I, I really like a lot of hard music to, you know, push that extra weight. So I have everything on there from Trapped, which, you know, that Headstrong song is my my go-to for getting me in the zone to um, really hardcore rap like Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Then I have Tool on there and Metallica and um, just so many, so many different songs. But the, the one thing is that they all have to have like that passion, that like punch to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. It's, um, I, I can't live without music. That's cool. What about you, Maggie? Do you listen to music when you exercise? I, you know what? Lately, I've been listening to um, Nike Run Club guided runs. Oh yeah, that's right. Coach Bennett, who, if he were to watch this, he's my hero because I'm always <laughs> like, as I'm dying, Coach Bennett comes on and says, "You can do this," you know, kind of thing. So I've been oh, listening cool. to that for more motivation, and uh, those runs really like help you on, um, like, with your form and your focus. But uh, when I'm doing like speed runs, I will put on music. I usually just put on Pandora, like flogging Molly is what I put on if I need to like run fast. But it's always so funny. So I'm looking forward to a playlist because it'll be like flogging Molly and it'll be like all. And then they'll come on like some Irish limerick song from like 1950. (laughs) (laughs) What? So yeah, I probably need just like I need a better hydration strategy. I probably need a better music strategy. too. (laughs) Well, hey, is there anything else we should touch on what's up with SUPS or Fit for Natural? You know, I, um, I love Fit for Natural and I love the, the community aspects and I see the, the Facebook group going. You know, I was wondering if we could do like, or if you guys would be interested in, in doing any type of like challenges, you know, maybe we could see if we could, you know, get a virtual challenge going. I know, like I saw yeah. Heather did the plank challenge. Maybe it, it might be fun for all, like for everyone to do, I don't know, like a push-up challenge or, or, you know, jumping jacks or something. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's I'm in. Yeah, you, may, you name it um, and maybe, you know, give it some thought and, and post it to Fit for Natural and then uh, maybe reach out to some of the What's Up With Subs people who haven't joined in yet and, and they could do it as well. And we could just kind of get this whole group working towards it. I'm in. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. good idea. Thank you guys so much for creating Fit for Natural and just, you know, having our, our community of the natural products industry, like support each other. That, that's really all it's about, right? To, well, to make yeah. sure Likewise it's, with what's up with SUPS too. It's absolutely. I said, what's up with dish. SUPS when I went in Jersey, it was like the first time, I, what was it? Was it in March of this year or maybe April? And it was like the first time that I went, it was actually like the first time that I went like out to a bar with like people. <laughs> so it was great. It like got me out of my home body groove that I've gotten into. So thank you for that. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me again. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thanks for filling us in and uh, we'll stay in touch on the Facebook group. Yeah. Look out for the next what's up with SUPS event and make sure you go. They're awesome. (laughs) 